Okay. So welcome to our the course um, BC one one six lifestyle evangelism. Okay. So just for today and next week, uh, I'll be taking the classes. Uh, Pastor Paul Emanuel is away. He had to go away on emergency. So he's not here. Uh, so um, our other staff are just filling in uh, for him. And uh, so this week, next week, I'll take the class. And then the following week, Pastor Paul should be back. He's coming back on 23rd. Uh, so he'll be back and he will continue um, this class, which is on lifestyle evangelism. Um, I am doing another course with you, which is on identity. Right, so that's that's a very simple course. It's an easy course, but it's very important. And I'll be doing that course with you. Um, I think tomorrow. Yeah. So we'll be doing that. Yeah. So um, let's pray and get started. You have the notes with you. Uh, lifestyle evangelist. Yeah, you have that. Okay. Let's pray. We'll get started. Welcome to those of you who are connecting online and also those who will be listening to this on the e-learning. Let's pray and we'll get started. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this academic year. Thank you for all the students present, for those who are connected online. And Father, even as we journey through this course, we pray that there will be impartation of truths, there will be impartation of grace and anointing in our lives in this area of sharing the gospel, of evangelizing, of speaking about Jesus. And God, that each of us will lead many to faith in Christ. That we will see many souls brought into the kingdom of God through the equipping that we are given here in this course. That we will bring many souls into your kingdom. We ask that it will happen in and through our lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So... This course on lifestyle evangelism, I'll uh, just introduce the course here. And uh, if you look at the table of contents um, on page four, uh, let me also share this with those who are online. Okay. So, basically, in this course, we want to learn how to share Jesus, how to share the gospel with other people, right? So that's our goal. And each one of us must know how to share the gospel, how to lead somebody to faith in Christ, and how to disciple them, right? So, one of the callings on our lives as disciples of Jesus is that each one of us must go and make disciples. Right? We cannot be a disciple of Jesus if we are not making disciples. That means we have to win people to Christ and disciple them in their journey of faith. And we, we, we want to learn how to do that. So I want to encourage you as we go through this course and learn these simple things, as and when you get opportunity to witness, to share, right? Now, we will be doing that um, during, the, during the, uh, the whole semester in the afternoons, I think once a week. Uh, we have intentionally, we have on, I think it's on Thursdays, when you go out, um, uh, either you'll go to one of the college campuses nearby, Krista Jayanti, or now we have even APC North. Um, Pastor Nancy will coordinate that. They will take you out to go out on the streets, you give out books, you have conversation with people, and uh, you will be encouraged to share the gospel, right? So whatever you're learning in this course, every week you'll be given the opportunity to put it into practice, right? So start talking to people about Jesus, have a conversation. So uh, the important thing is to practice it, to keep doing it. And of course, for, for many of us, for many of us, we're afraid. How can I talk to somebody 
about Jesus. How? And sometimes we are afraid, we hold back. You know, for, there are different reasons. One is one reason is we don't know how to start. I can talk about cricket, I can talk about football, I can talk about uh, Olympics, I can talk about the news. But how do I start talking about Jesus? How to start the conversation? Right? So we will learn some simple things, some practical things. Right? Uh, if it's a friend, it's easier because you have a relationship. You can talk to them. They know you. Uh, it's easy. But if it's a stranger, it's difficult. How, how do I start a conversation with a stranger, somebody who i never seen? How do we start talking to them? And, and again, it can depend. Sometimes, you know, uh, you might see the stranger for a few minutes. How do you quickly tell them about Jesus? Right? Uh, maybe, you know, you're, you're in the mall or uh, you're traveling, you know, somewhere from place A to place B. They're sitting next to you maybe for five minutes, ten minutes. How can you quickly tell them about Jesus? Right? Uh, we will learn how to do these things, depending on different situations. How we can share the gospel, you know, we need to know how to do it, right? Uh, so, how do you share the gospel with friends, family? How do you share the gospel with total strangers, right? If you know. So, one thing that holds us back is we don't know how to start. Second thing is we don't know what to say. Right? What am I supposed to tell them? You know? About Jesus, we can talk about Christmas, we can talk about Easter, we can talk about Good Friday, but what am I supposed to tell? What is the gospel? What is the message I must give? Should I simply say, you believe in Jesus, life will become fine? Or <laughs> should I say, believe in Jesus, all your problems will go away? Or what is the message? What is the gospel? We don't know what to say. So we're going to learn. This is what you must tell. People. And some things you don't tell people. Don't make false promises. Don't make, you know, don't give them, yeah, uh, you believe in Jesus, uh, life will become like heaven. No, no, no. That is not the, you know, yeah, God will definitely help them through their problems and all that. But uh, there is more, you know, the, the, the salvation of the soul is important. That's what we are focused on, right? Um, so, what to share. The third thing, many times we struggle is, okay, how do I get them to make a decision? I can start a conversation, I can tell them, but how to get them to make a decision? And when is the right time to do it? I can't force them. I can't force them. But how can I help them make that decision? Right? So we want to learn that also. Simple tips, simple tips. Right? Depending on the context, depending on where you are, we can do different things. You know, for example, we can say, uh, would you like to make a decision to believe in Jesus? I'll lead you in a simple prayer. Right? That's an easy way. Right? You pray this prayer with me. You say, you believe in your heart. You say with your mouth, Lord Jesus, I want to follow you and I want to become your disciple. You say simple, simple. You can lead in a prayer. That can be a way to make a decision. Sometimes people may say, oh, uh, give me some time. I want to read. I want to read the gospel myself. Okay, fine. Take your time. Read the gospel. And then when you're ready, you make a decision. Sometimes that decision they may make on their own. At home. So yeah, I made a decision to follow Jesus. Okay, that's fine. Right? So it can happen in different ways. We have to learn how to make a decision. Um, and so uh, we will be talking about some of these things uh, in this course and then we will also talk about you know how do you share with with somebody from a different faith uh, what are the specific things we need to talk about when we are talking to somebody who's from a Hindu background because understand their belief what they believe and how to present Jesus in a way that they will understand how to share the gospel with somebody who's from a Muslim background. Understand what they believe. And present Jesus to them in a way they will understand. They need to see the difference. Right? 
uh, the problem in sharing the gospel with somebody who's from a Hindu background is very different from sharing with the Muslim. Muslim, they're thinking differently. They're not thinking. They're not. They, they're not thinking the same way. The Hindu and the Muslim. They, they're all thinking very different. So, how we explain the gospel to a Hindu and how we explain the gospel to a Muslim will be slightly different. It's the same gospel, same message about Jesus, but how to tell it to them must be a little different because they are thinking differently, right? So we need to understand that. We need to understand how they are thinking, how, what they believe, so that we can explain the gospel to them clearly. So that we will cover uh, as we go further in the course. Right? So the main thing, main, this is very important, that is all of us must be able to share the gospel, tell others about Jesus, simple ways. Right? And for some of you, maybe, God may have called you to be in the ministry as an evangelist or a pastor, whatever ministry. Whatever your ministry is, never forget to bring people to Jesus. So you might say, and uh, you've been at APC, I mean, you've come to the service only once, but generally, even in our Sunday services, Sunday mornings, uh, maybe not every Sunday, but many, uh, very often, even in our Sunday morning services, we take some time to invite people to believe in Jesus. We give an altar call or an invitation to believe. Even though it may be a church service meant mainly for believers, there will be people who come to church who have not received Christ, who have not become followers of Jesus. So we give an invitation. Would you like to receive Jesus? You know, make a decision. So, whatever your ministry is, you may be a pastor, uh, anything. You still this aspect of winning people to Jesus is still part of your ministry. You have to lead people to faith in Christ. Okay, so it, this will be useful for all of us, regardless of what our ministry is. We will have to learn how to share Jesus and lead people to Christ. So let's go to lesson number one, which is sharing Jesus, the necessity and urgency. Why is it necessary for all of us to share Jesus? Why must we do it? Why must we do this? Why can't I keep my faith to myself? Be very happy, sit in the <laughs> sit at home, worship God, read my Bible, pray, be very happy. Why do I have to go and tell other people? Why is there a need to share the gospel? Why is there a need to evangelize? Why is there a need to talk to other people about Jesus and to bring them to the faith, the necessity and the urgency? I mean, why should we do it now, quickly, as often as we can, as quickly as we can? So, let's talk about the necessity of it first. Why should we witness? Why should we tell people about the message of Jesus? Simple answers, simple reasons. First of all, we must be convinced that every person needs a Savior. Every person needs a Savior. So, when you look at people, so when you go outside to seeing people, you see them. One thought, this person needs Jesus. Yeah, it must be in your heart. Don't just look at them as people. Yeah, yeah. Of course, they are people. They are going about their work. They are going about things. But in your heart, you must feel this person needs Jesus. That must be in our hearts. When you see crowds of people, in your heart you, you, you say, Oh God, all these people need Jesus. It must be in our heart. Why? Because we understand 
First of all, like the scripture says, Romans 3, 23, everybody has sinned. Everybody has done wrong things. Sin has affected every person. And because of sin, what has happened? We are separated from God. Isaiah 59, verse 2. Okay. And because of sin, Romans 5, 12. Death has come into the world, has passed to every man, Romans 5, 12. And the result of sin is death, Romans 6, 23. The result of sin is death. All right, so um, let's turn in our Bibles to all these verses, okay? And what I want to challenge you to do is all these verses that you see in the first paragraph, I want you to memorize those verses. Hmm? Can you all do that? Okay. You write these verses down, wherever you want. You know, you can write it on a paper or write it in a notebook, whatever. Memorize these verses. When I, if I ask you, what does Romans 3.23 say? She say, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of... Right? And I ask you, what is Isaiah 59, verse 2, 1 and 2? What does it say? It should say, our sins have separated us from God. God's ear is not heavy that he cannot hear. His hand is not short that he cannot save. But our sins have separated us from God. So you should know these verses. Memorize them. I write them down. Memorize them. So, but let's read it today. Romans chapter 3. Romans 3. You should know these verses so that you can quickly turn. If you're talking to somebody, you can, you know, turn to these scriptures or at least quote these scriptures to them and explain the gospel. So Romans 3, verse 23, Paul writes here, he says, For all have sinned. And fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Right? So you can show when you're talking to somebody, you turn to Romans 3 23, you say, See, Bible says, All have sinned. All have sinned. And fall short of the glory of God. Then let's turn to Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. It says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot say, nor his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. So it says, verse 2, Your iniquities have separated you from your God. So you can imagine there's a big wall that is separating us from God. Your sins have separated you from God. So when you're talking to somebody, we need to explain this. Hey, all of us have sinned. You agree? They say, yeah. I agree. All of us have sinned, of course. And what does sin do? Well, the Bible says, sin separates us from God. It becomes like a big wall. Like um, I think we'll get one whiteboard here. We'll draw it. Uh, it's a nice thing. You can draw a picture. You know, you're on one side. God is on the other side. And there's a big wall in between. Sin separates us from and so on this side, I'm here, I'm a sinner. God is on the other side, but there's a big wall, the wall of sin. And I pray. And God is not hearing my prayer. Not because he doesn't have ears to hear, but sin has separated us from God. I'm saying, God, help me. But help is not coming. Not because he doesn't have hands to help, 
but sin has separated us from God. It's become this big wall between God and me. That's the position of every person. So we are disconnected from God because of sin. And Romans 5 verse 12. What else does sin do? It says, for by one man, Romans 5, let's read it. Let's go there first. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. It says, therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin. So here's the other consequence. Sin came and death came through sin. And death has affected every person. So sin, separation from God, and death. All of us are affected by that. Right? And then, the other consequence, Romans 6, 23, next chapter. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The wages of sin is death. The result of sin is death. So death, there are three kinds of death. One, there is physical death. You die physically. Second, there's also spiritual death. Right? Spiritual death means I'm separated from God. Right now, sin separates us from God. That's spiritual death. And then there is eternal death. Eternal death means we will be forever separated from God in hell. Eternal death. So there is spiritual death, physical death, and eternal death. All the result of sin. So every person is going to suffer these three things. Spiritual death, separated from God. Physical death, we are all going to die. Eternal death, forever away from God in hell. Why is that? Because God is a holy God. He is perfectly holy. So, not even one sin can come into His presence. Now, if you want to imagine, picture this. Just picture this. Think about, nowadays we don't have kings and queens, but if you think about a king, so think a very great king. Can anybody come into his presence? No. There is protocol. There will be all soldiers everywhere around him. And some man on the street, he wants to see the king. We just can't come, just walk in like that. No. He's a great king. And if you want to see the king, you also must be in some decent shape. You can't just come like that. You get out of sleep, wear your pajamas and come. No, you wear, you know, you have to, even today, like if, if uh, the chief minister tells you, come to meet me, you'll get up in your pajamas and go. No, you'll probably wear your best clothes. And why? Because you're going to meet somebody who is important. There is a certain expectation, a certain way to come into the presence of somebody who is important. But think about if you have to come into the presence of God. Sin. Just cannot walk into the presence of his presence is very holy, very holy, light. So the sinner 
cannot approach a holy God. Just can't come like that. Sin has its consequences. It separates us from God. It brings death into our lives. And the result of sin is death. There is physical, the spiritual death, physical death, and eternal forever, forever separated from God's presence. So that is the condition of every person. You have understanding. That is the condition of every person. And the good news is, uh, uh, and some additional points here. Roman uh, Isaiah 64 verse 4. We cannot save ourselves by our good works. Isaiah 64 verse 4. Let's read that. If you turn with me, please, into your Bible, in your Bibles, Isaiah 64. Isaiah 64 verse 4. Okay, we have to make a correction there. It's verse 6. Isaiah 64, verse 6. We have to correct that, please. Isaiah 64, verse 6, not verse 4. But we all, like an unclean thing, but we, all, we are all like an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are like filthy rags. We all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away. Now notice what Isaiah is saying. Our righteousness is like filthy rags. So some people will say, now again, think about this from a Hindu mindset. Uh, and you will learn this later when you talk about how do you share with Hindus. But it, for the Hindu, it's like this karma. You do bad deeds. But you can compensate by doing good deeds. Right? So if your good deeds are more than your bad deeds, you will make it to heaven. You'll get moksha and then eventually nirvana. You'll join, be joined with God. Moksha is salvation. You'll get salvation. If your good deeds are more than your Bad deeds. That is their thinking. But what does the Bible say? Isaiah 64 verse 6. Our righteousness, our good deeds, you do what good you are. Our righteousness are like filthy rags before God. Our righteousness, the good things we do, are like filthy rags. Why? Because it's not about the deed. It's about the inside. By nature, we are sinners. So sometimes even in our best deed, the heart can be wrong. Because the motivation is wrong. The deed may be good. Ah, I'll give you 10 rupees. But why I'm giving you 10 rupees? Because tomorrow I'll come, I'll collect 100 rupees. I'm just making up something, right? The motivation, the motive is, deed may be good. I'm helping somebody. Motive is wrong. So our best deeds before God, in God's standard, are like filthy. Isaiah 64, verse 6. So if somebody says, yeah, yeah, I did a lot of wrong, but I did more right. So, but the Bible says, our best actions are like filthy rags before God. And Romans 3 verse 10, that next verse there, it says, there is no one who is righteous, not even one. Acts Romans. Romans chapter 3. Romans 3. And verse 10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. I mean, there is no man who is righteous. 
no matter how many good deeds we do, how many good deeds we do, our deeds are not going to make us righteous. Why? Because sin is already there and death has already come into every person. So some people say, By oh, I've done so much good, I'm a very righteous person. Bible says there is no one who is righteous. Nobody who is righteous. Now, of course, with all due respect, there may be some good people who have done a lot of good. They may be, you know, very kind, maybe very generous. They lived a very pious life. All that, very with respect. Okay, fine. But still, that person is not righteous in the eyes of God. They may have lived a good life. I'm not saying. I'm not denying that. But there is no one who has made themselves perfectly righteous. Nobody. So we need to must remember these scriptures. Okay, Memorize them. Because when you are sharing the gospel, you have to share these scriptures. Depending on who you are speaking to, right? To explain. They need to understand why we are sharing. So, this is the condition, which means we cannot save ourselves, other people cannot save us. First, I cannot save myself, I am a sinner. Somebody else cannot save me. Somebody else, they may be made a saint, they may be a priest, they may be a bishop, archbishop, super archbishop. It doesn't matter. But that person cannot save me. Because that person has their sin of their own. They cannot save me. So we all, we all need a savior. All need a savior. So that must be very clear. And we have the good news that God has sent Jesus Christ to be our Say. We'll explain that a little later. But we have the good news that Jesus Christ is our Savior. So you need, you need to memorize some other scriptures. John 3.16. Right? We all know that. John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting Memorize that. Right? So you can say, see, God loves us so much. He sent Jesus. He sent Jesus. And we will talk a little later why Jesus is so unique, why he is so different from other people. First John 4 and verse 14. First John 4, verse 14. I'm taking time purposely in making us turn to these scriptures because I want you to see them. I also want you to memorize all these scriptures. Okay? You should memorize it. Then you'll be able to share the gospel with people. Otherwise, you won't know what to say. Oh, yo, he wants to know what is the gospel. I don't know which verse to turn. <laughs> you should know. Okay? Quickly. Tuck, 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 tuck. This is the gospel. First John 4, verse 14. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as Savior of the world. The Father has sent the Son. He sent Jesus to be the Savior of the world. So there is a Savior. Every person needs a Savior. And Jesus Christ is that Savior. Right? Romans 5, 8. Romans 5, verse 8. Says God, Romans 5 8. I'll return there. Romans 5 verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God shows his love for us. So you can, you can tell somebody, you can turn them, turn. Turn to the scripture. See, God has shown his love for you. How? He said, while we were still sinners, we were sinners, 
But Christ died for us. Christ died for us who are sins. That's the message of the gospel. That's the good news we are supposed to share. Right? Christ died for us. And he took all our sins away. Isaiah 53 verse 6. Isaiah 53 verse 6. I remember when I was in school, I, uh, I used to memorize all these verses and then I would catch all my friends, say, hey, take them through all these verses <laughs> and tell them, now you want to receive Jesus. A lot of them gave their lives to Christ, you know, just show them these verses. It's in the Bible. You want to make a decision for Christ and yes. They will. Isaiah 53 verse 6. It says, All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So we are like sheep. We've all gone away from God. But what did God do? He took all our sins and he put it upon Jesus. God has laid on him, that is on Jesus, all our sin. So this is where, this is an important truth. That Jesus became a substitute. So in the Hindu mindset, they're trying to atone for their own sins. How? You go dip in the Ganges, you go, you know, you do pilgrimages, so many things. We try to pay for our own sins, like doing something, you know, penance, sacrifice, so many things. In many, mind, many, many religions, you pay for your own sin. But here the Bible is saying, we like sheep have gone astray. But our sins have been taken and put upon Jesus. He paid for our sin. And he was qualified to take our sin because he had no sin of his own. So I can't come to you and say, I'll take your sins on me. No, I have my own sins to carry and pay for. But Jesus had no sin. So God took our sins, put it on Jesus, and the punishment for those sins were put upon him. You understand? That is why he can offer us forgiveness. Now, when you speak to the Muslim, the Muslim will say, they believe in forgiveness. They believe in forgiveness. But they will say, if God wants to forgive me, he'll forgive me. If God doesn't want to forgive, he won't forgive. So I don't know whether I'm forgiven or not. I don't know. So they don't have that assurance. If God wants to forgive, he will forgive. Allah will forgive. But question, on what basis can he forgive? Can he simply say, I forgive? Because sin has to have consequence. It has to have result. Punishment. He can't simply say, I just forgive. Who's taking that punishment for your sin? Where is that? Only in Jesus. So God cannot be an unjust judge and just say, I'll forgive your sin. No. He's a righteous judge. There is sin. There has to be the result of sin. So this is where, when you're talking to a Muslim, forgiveness. In Jesus, there is a basis on which God, who is a righteous judge, can forgive sin. Because Jesus bore the punishment for our 
You understand? So forgiveness is not just God saying, I forgive you. No, there has to be a reason. He, has, he is a righteous judge. How, on what basis will he forgive? Somebody took our sin. Somebody paid for it. Right? So Jesus took our sin. He paid for our sin. First John chapter 2, verse 2. Two more verses, we'll cover this paragraph. First John 2, 2. First John chapter 2, verse 2. First John 2, 2. And he himself is the propitiation or payment for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. Now notice, you can show this to somebody, Hindu or a Muslim, anyone. Jesus is the payment for our sins. And not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Whole world. He paid for the sins of the whole world. Show me one other person on this planet who ever lived who said, I am paying for the sins of the whole world. No other person. But the Bible says, He is the payment for our sins and not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. So Jesus pay for the sins of the whole world. And that is why, last verse, Romans 6.23, we go back to that verse which we read earlier. That is why God can offer salvation as a free gift. Romans 6 and verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. In Christ Jesus are. So, Sin has a result, it is death, spiritual death, physical death, eternal death. We are separated from God, we are all going to hell. But the gift of God. God is giving a gift. So here again, it's very different. In Hinduism, you have to earn salvation. You get moksha through your karma. And if you don't have enough karma, there is reincarnation. You keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming back until you break out of that cycle. So you have to earn your salvation. But Bible says, the gift of God. God is giving a gift. It is eternal life. Our problem is we have eternal death because of sin. God is giving the solution. Is giving us eternal Life. How? In Jesus Christ. Amen? So, why is there a need to share the gospel? Because we have the answer. We know the problem. We have the answer. So I have to explain to people. Every person needs a savior and we know who is that savior. We know how you can receive the gift that God is giving. We know. So we have to tell people. Right? So why must we share the gospel? Because every person needs a They need Jesus. There's a need. So when you and I look at people, always in your heart, say, Lord, that person needs Jesus. Have that that burden, that, that compassion in your heart. Lord, these people need Jesus. Okay? So, we're going to stop here for today. I want us to memorize all these scriptures. And there are many more verses you have to memorize. So all these verses that we looked at, you know, in this paragraph, Romans 3.23, Isaiah 5.92, Romans 5.12, Romans 6.23, Isaiah 64.6, 6, Romans 3.10, First John 4.14, Romans 5.8, Isaiah 53.6, First John 2.2. 2. All these verses you must memorize. It's good to memorize scripture. Can you do that? Okay.
before you leave Bible college, at least 100 verses, <laughs> maybe more. You should know. Okay, so you write it down and go over it again and again. Because when you're talking to somebody, you should not say a blank, oh, I don't know what to tell him. You should know. And if possible, open the Bible and show it. Then they'll believe you. Other than he's simply saying something. But if you have the chance, you say, see, it's here. Read it. Or on your phone. Read it. See, it's here. Then they'll believe. Yeah, it's actually in the Bible. They listen. So it's good to memorize these verses. Okay? So make an effort. There are some more verses that we will learn. Memorize them so you can share the gospel. All right? Um, we'll continue this next week. Let's stand to our feet, please, and we'll pray. Uh, I did not give you time for questions, but think about this, and next week uh, we will take up questions. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Um, okay, I, I see a question on the chat. Shakti has asked which version of the Bible. Uh, most of us here, we use the New King James Version of the Bible. Um, but there are other versions as well that you can maybe easier to understand. The NIV, um, the New American Standard Bible. I mean, there are many other versions. But I would recommend the New King James if you, if you would like to. Right? Okay, let's pray and then we will close. Father, we just thank you. For all the students here, all those who have joined us online, and thank you as we get started in this course. God, stir our hearts up. Give us a passion for souls. Give us a passion to see people come to faith in Christ. Give us boldness in our hearts, Lord. Help us to be fearless. Help us to be unashamed of the gospel of Jesus. And help us to be wise in how and when we speak to people so they will be able to receive the gospel. Use each one of us, God. Equip us and work through us so we can bring many souls into your kingdom. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Please take your break and you can come back for your supernatural hour, please. Thank you.